the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us everlasting life. servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may, ever, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who misled and scatter the flock of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, against the shepherds who shepherd my people. You have scattered my sheep and driven them away. You have not cared for them, but I will take care to punish your evil deeds. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock from all the lands to which I have driven them and bring them back to their meadow. There they shall increase and multiply. I will appoint shepherds for them who will shepherd them so that they need no longer fear and tremble. And none shall be missing, says the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous shoot to David. As king, he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah shall be saved. Israel shall dwell in security. This is the name they give him. The Lord, our justice. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
wide restful waters he leads me he refreshes my soul the lord is my shepherd there is nothing i shall want he guides me the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have become near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, he who made both one and broke down the dividing wall of enmity through his flesh, abolishing the law with its commandments and legal claims, that he might create in himself one new person in place of the two thus establishing peace, and might reconcile both with God in one body through the cross, putting that enmity to death by it. He came and preached peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be Jesus. to God. For the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The apostles gathered together with Jesus and reported all they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. People were coming and going in great numbers, and they had no opportunity even to eat. So they went off in the boat by themselves to a deserted place. People saw them leaving, and many came to know about it. They hastened there on foot from all the towns and arrived at the place before them. 
When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, excitement always inspires us to tell stories of our first successes. Even for some of us, when we listen to success stories of our loved ones, we feel thrilled and we share the same joy with them. I have a nephew, his name is Limwell, and this summer he started his karate lesson. Oh, he energetically trains in martial arts every other day. And he gets more even excited when he gets home and tells us the new movements he learned. Now, sometimes the two of us try these movements and I pretend to be the bad guy. Then he applies his new skills to me. We are happy to share the joys and the success stories of others. Now, it was with the same joy and excitement when Jesus' apostles completed their first successful missionary endeavor. Now, then finally, after being with him for a long time, under his instruction and guidance, they had been sent out to be his ambassadors, to announce his message and to testify to its truth. Now they returned to report their progress as today's gospel narrates for us. We know from other evangelists that this moment of reunion was full of rejoicing and energy. They had experienced the power of God working through them, moving hearts through their words and deeds. Imagine the disciples' excitement returning from their mission, having gone out to teach Jesus' message. They were excited to share their stories of the people they met, their challenges, and how they had influenced those who listened. But they were also tired from the intense activity you know, and looked forward to just being with Jesus. What a consolation to hear Jesus say, Come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. With Jesus and in Jesus, we find the solitude and intimacy that our hearts long after busy activities. Now we can hear this in his invitation to come away with him, even if it is in the quiet interior of our hearts. There we can share with him all we have been experiencing. Now his response to his apostles' return from their exciting and busy adventure was an invitation to chillax. So he takes them aside to rest, to be with him in the quiet intimacy of their small community. Now dear brothers and sisters, the lesson is clear, but sometimes it is hard to put into practice. Active as we are as Christians, we need to balance our activities with contemplation. Time spent in personal conversation with the Lord. Sometimes we can wonder why we get so emotionally and spiritually exhausted by the busyness of our lives. Now maybe it's because we are not recharging our spiritual batteries. Our stress Discouragement and other crippling emotions can wear us out if we are not daily reinforcing our faith in Jesus Christ. As followers of Christ, 
we are challenged to know the heart of Christ. We should desire to know what He loves and what causes Him pain and what moves Him to action. In the Gospel today, we see a particular and clear vision of Jesus' heart through His interaction with His disciples. And this is the very challenge and reminder for us. Only our friendship with Christ can supply us with the strength and wisdom we need to be truly successful. Successful not just in the roles we play, but in who we are inside. Our daily work can be fully authentic and joyful if rooted in prayer since apart from our Lord, we can do nothing. Without prayer, study, and time alone with God, our well will soon run dry. We will have nothing substantial to offer to others, even to our families. And without action, without giving freely to others what we have freely received from God, our spiritual waters will become stagnant lifeless, like a lake without outlet. No family demands can make us feel like Jesus and the Twelve Apostles. All the more this summer, we wish for times of relaxation and renewal. No, but there are errands to do, household chores to keep up with, volunteer commitments to keep. Oh, they're all good things, but we can be left feeling drained and tired as we try to keep up. Perhaps we might take the opportunity this week to permit ourselves to find the rest Jesus seeks for his disciples in today's gospel. One of the gifts we can give to one another in our family life is finding the time and space to renew ourselves through prayer contemplation and action, prayer and work. Such was Christ's way. So such should be every Christian's way. Our Holy Father, Pope Francis, reminds us also that prayer and action must always be profoundly united. Together they are essential. For him, prayer and action should never be separated but lived profound, in profound unity and harmony. Now with this realization, we can reflect and gaze upon our blessed Lord as the Good Shepherd. Now, a radiance takes place with a shepherd and his flock, a way of being with one another that creates a sense of order and well-being. The sheep can graze on the pasture, protected from the wolves. They know the shepherd's voice and thus follow him where he leads. Likewise, the shepherd looks upon his sheep, aware of their need for his guidance and protection for their well-being. Jesus is our good shepherd. He knows our deepest needs. He desires to protect and care for us. And through the inspiration of his voice and his sacred heart, he teaches us the way to remain in his pasture. Now, dear friends, let us glimpse into the heart of Jesus that leaves us with at least two reminders. First, through our work and prayer, we must remember the compassion Jesus has for those who are lost and wandering. Hopefully, we can strive to cultivate the same kind of compassionate heart toward the lost who live all around us. And second, the interaction of Jesus with his disciples is a reminder of the joy of being cared for by the Good Shepherd. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, is sympathetic and kind. And he loves every one of us. We are the ship of his fold.
As we encounter our blessed Lord and receive Him in the Holy Eucharist, let us ask Him to be the shepherd of our souls and teach us His way. May He guide us and inform our hearts to be His disciples. May we have that ardent desire to find rest with Him, to share our day, and to receive His care, protection, and guidance. Gathered as one flock of our Lord Jesus Christ, together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, Father, Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, a light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate for the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathered as one people, we voice our concerns to our Heavenly Father who always listens. For the church. May the Holy Spirit continue to fill her with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. For all who hold authority in government or civic institutions, and for those who enact policies, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer for expressing or sharing their faith, may God relieve them of all persecution and give them strength in their trials. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those of us gathered here, may we be blessed by the Holy Spirit who calls us to deeper conversion and commitment to each other. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Nora Rokalia, may God come, may God welcome them into eternal rest. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions mentioned in our parish intention prayer book, and for Porfirio Regalado, Jr., to whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear and answer our prayers with your unending compassion. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants, and make it holy as we bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly really right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and ever to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has he had freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. Similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, 
and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and James our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and pray, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the day of our daily bread, and to our trespasses, and as we forgive those who trespass against us. Let us not come to thy Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. To the kingdom, power, and the glory of yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Prayer of spiritual communion for those who are joining us spiritually in the Mass. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I, am, I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at this spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself fully to you. 
Never permit me to be separated from you.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those who have been imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A few announcements. Everyone is invited to join us for our monthly festival of praise. It will be on July 23rd, this coming Friday, from 7.30 to 9 p.m. Next weekend will be World Day of Prayer for Grandparents and the Elderly. At Masses, a blessing will be given to grandparents and the elderly. 2021 Mass Intention Book still has open dates in the months of August, September, October, November, and December. Please call the parish office to schedule your intentions. Please do take home a copy of the bulletin, and please check our parish website for information about parish events. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.